Thank you all for coming out. <clears throat> My name is Alex Sachs. I am a pro market specialist with Canon um, based in our Hollywood facility. And I work primarily with our cinema products, uh, but I get some crossover in our DSLR and our professional video cameras. Today I want to talk about um, HDR and more is kind of the name of the talk, but we're just really going to focus on the firmware upgrade that we're doing to the C300 Mark II and some of the other upgrades we're doing to our 4K reference displays, the DPV2410. Uh, it's an amazing 4K uh, HDR display that's very, very light and able to be brought on set as well as um, in color correcting studios. It's a really amazing tool. So the first thing I'll start with is our update to our C300 Mark II, which I have sitting right here. Um, we're, we're bringing back a few things, and we're also improving a couple things. Um, the first thing we're doing is we're bringing back our Magnify during the record. It's something that was kind of a key feature of the original C300. And as we released the C300 Mark II, we removed it because of our autofocus capabilities. We really improved the autofocus in the system, and the thinking was, Let's, uh, let's just go with what we have in our new tools. And a lot of our customers who were using cinema lenses and, and lenses that didn't have autofocus said, we really want that magnify back. So we decided to bring that back. Um, we have a new log, Canon Log 3, which is, uh, we heard, uh, and, and again, all of these updates, direct feedback from users. That's really what we were uh, hoping to get, was real honest feedback, and then for Canon to respond in a timely manner so that the camera that you bought is just as good or better than maybe you originally thought. So. When the log two came out, which is our new gamma log curve for this camera to achieve the 15 stops of dynamic range, it was very aggressive in the lower end. So some people said, hey, we're looking for something a little bit between your original log and your log two. So we created Canon log three. And I'll show you some slides from that in a little bit, kind of the differences and what it's doing. The other thing we've done, which is pretty revolutionary actually, is the grip on the side of our camera with this firmware upgrade is now going to be able to power our servo lenses. So you're going to be able to do zooming in and zooming out with the actual grip on the side of the camera. So something really exciting that I, I'm, I'm eager to, uh, to talk about today. Um, the other thing also is our focus guide. So our focus guide is an amazing tool that uses the dual pixel technology, but doesn't actually change the focus. It just uses it to read out the distance to your subjects and gives you a little arrow indicating how, how far or close you are with your focus. And as you get right to the center, it'll go green and letting you know that you're in focus. So it's full manual, but it's just a guide. Um, we're also bringing our dual pixel AF, which is our really, really uh, responsive and amazing autofocus from the C300 Mark II, to our 17 to 120, which is our really, really popular cinema servo lens we have in the market right now, um, and, and also the, the focus guide. And the last piece, which is um, something extremely important, we've now become ASUS 1.0 qualified. So something really important. It's, it's not just something that we are trying to get approved. It's something that's gone through. We have been qualified. It's a big deal. So we're at the ground, we're at the ground floor of, of ASUS, which is going to help standardize color across workflows with different cameras and different uh, package systems. So I'll start just going through each individual thing that we're doing so you can kind of get an idea. Again, we brought back the magnifying during the record, something you can't do in a DSLR, but a cinema, a cinema product can. While you're recording, you can actually pop in and check your focus without actually changing the frame, something that's extremely important for a lot of shooters who aren't using our autofocus. Uh, if you're like me, you're very, very worried about focus all the time, especially with these larger sensor cameras. This is just a little tool that'll help you while you're actually recording. Uh, it's a, it's a full-on hard button on the side. We actually have a button right here that says magnify. You can actually program it to any of our customizable buttons, including the grip or the side of the camera. Um, it was something that we had in our original C300. It was probably one of the most popular features, and I think almost every camera does it now, specifically because of that, because it's an amazing tool. So we didn't have it in the original 300 Mark II when we shipped it, but we're going to have it in our new firmware upgrade that's coming out uh, in July. The next thing, this is really big. This, this was the thing that I think was what everyone asked for most when the C300 Mark II was, was released, was the Log 2. And they were used to shooting our original Canon Log, which is, is very, very light. It's a, it's a lighter log. It's very easy to grade. Um, it's something that um, when they started using the Log 2, they were seeing the, the naked attributes of the sensor. A lot of the times when you're looking at Log and a lot of these other cameras and, and our original C300, a lot of the imperfections or some of the things that maybe you weren't used to seeing were kind of buried under um, um, black levels and noise reduction inside of the camera. So so when we created the Log 2, it was extremely, it was, it was the raw image coming off of the sensor. And people were seeing it, and they were saying, wow, this isn't what I thought it was going to be. I was hoping more for your original log, but I still want that dynamic range. So they weren't sure. Now, 
Log2 is amazing for certain types of applications. If you are someone who's a very advanced color corrector, if you're someone who knows how to really dig and needs to dig detail out of shadows that, that maybe isn't there in some of our other log curves, this is the workflow for you. But the majority of our customers are looking for something that's a little bit easier. It only requires maybe a LUT or something very simple to put in to create a really nice image, but still gives you more flexibility than you would if you shot the look in camera. So you can kind of see the differences in this slide between the log two and the log three. And I'll do a full, full screen size in a second so you can tell. It, we're doing a few different things. Um, so not only are, have we added log three, we've actually added uh, better processing for our log two. So our log two, we heard from our users, had uh, this kind of noticeable um, line going across when you shot directly into sources that were right into the camera. Now, this is something that's inherent in all CMOS sensors. You just weren't seeing it before. Our log was extremely aggressive in the lower ends. It was, it was showing you everything on the sensor uh, in order for us to achieve those 15 stops. And, and people weren't as happy seeing something like this. Now, again, this is log footage. You're never going to put log footage out into the world. You're going to grade it. You know, that's the whole purpose of shooting log. So once you grade it, all of these imperfections or things that maybe that people didn't want to see are completely gone. But we've really improved the log two. But now let me show you the log three, and you'll see the difference between the log two and the log three. So here's log two, here's log three. I'll go back and forth a couple of times so you can kind of see it. But again, no more, you're not seeing that anymore. You're also seeing we've raised the black levels. So essentially what we've done is created something that's closer to our what we call wide DR, which is right between log and our 709 look. Um, it's something that's a little bit easier to grade. It's something that most of our customers are really looking for. They want a nice image. You st they still want to do some grading, but they don't want to spend you know, hours or maybe don't have the knowledge to really pull down noise and shadows and do certain things that's required of the log two. So we created the log three. Again, let me sh this is a step chart, so you'll be able to see the differences between the log two. So you'll notice how black the blacks are in the log two. And as I go to log three, they kind of almost become a little more gray. We've raised the black level a little bit in this. And we've reduced the noise. And we've also removed any kind of, there's a really a technical term for what that kind of streaking is. It's not streaking, but that look of, of, of a intense light source right in. You'd only really see it in very extreme circumstances. But it was something people didn't want to see. So we updated in the log three. It's completely gone. So this, this will kind of show you, and I don't really love charts like this. They're kind of, they get a little too heady for me. But just so you can kind of see the difference in the log curve, the red is the log, uh, the log 3, and uh, the green is the log 2. So you'll see at the higher end, your log 2 is going to give you a little bit more in the highlights. So if the project is requiring um, you getting more information out of the highlights, the log 2 is probably the right uh, gamma curve to use. So again, you really want to choose your log curve based on your project. You don't want to just use log two every time and think log two is the best. The original log might be the, the right application for you, or our new log three. So again, this is something that I think is very, very exciting. We're going to be offering in our grip zoom controls with our cinema servo lenses and our brand new 18 to 80, which I showed at this booth yesterday. It's a revolutionary lens that's getting its power through the mounts. So now because it's a Canon EF camera and an EF mount, they speak to each other and you're going to be able to do the zooming with the joystick. This is a really, really cool feature in that if you have a handheld rig that can reposition our grip, you now have zoom controller on the grip without having to buy any additional pieces. So this is something that's in our firmware. It's not going to cost the customer anything. It's just going to be a download available in July. The other big thing is the focus guide. And this was something that I was talking about earlier. This is an amazing tool. It's using the technology of the dual pixel autofocus, but it's not actually changing. So if you look here, you'll see the little green box. And as you go in and out of focus, those arrows on the top and the bottom will split letting you know how close or far away you are. And as you get into focus, the arrows will line up, and they'll go green like that. This is a big deal because these are our Cinema Prime lenses, full manual control. So you really, especially without our Magnify anymore, which is coming back, you need this tool more than ever. And what's really cool is you can send this focus guide out of the SDI port to an external monitor so an AC or someone can actually use it as a guide. You can move this box anywhere in the frame. So you can move it over to here, and it'll tell you how far away or how close you are to the focus. And what's really cool is if you know your lens, if you're pre-focused, the top is split. If you're post-focused, the bottom split. So you're, you're never missing the focus or pulling the wrong way anymore. If you know your lens and you know that if you pull it this way, it's for post-focus, this is giving you that info without you actually having to look at the lens or anything like that. So really, really amazing tool is going to now be available for the um, Cinema Primes. 
And to kind of piggyback off that, we're also bringing our dual pixel autofocus to our really, really popular 17 to 120. This lens has really hit the market for a lot of different types of shooters, mainly ENG style, uh, reality TV people, those kinds of things. It goes on a lot of different cameras besides um, any of our cinema products, so it's extremely popular. But if you use a C300 Mark II, you're going to get the dual pixel autofocus and the focus guide inside of it, just those nice tools that are a lot of our shooters are asking for. And the last one we're doing, um, we've now become ASUS 1.0 qualified. Now that means that ASUS has looked at this and they have said, yes, you are within our standards. If anyone's not familiar with ASUS, what they're really trying to do is create a standard right now for HDR and 4K. We're in a, we're in a, a bit of a transitional period right now because the technology is advancing so fast that we haven't created a standard that kind of everyone can kind of live within. So right now, well, there's a lot of different uh, brands and companies that are, are going out there to try to create their standard. And what ASUS' aim is to create a standard so that the cinematographer on set gets the exact look that they wanted all the way through, um, and that doesn't... It it doesn't matter what brand camera you shoot it on, what uh, NLE system you're using, color production. The whole point is that if you use their system, everything will stay the same throughout. So it's a really, really important thing for our industry. Um, and it's really going to be able to let people have new uh, versions of creating creative works. Because now they don't have to worry about, oh, I'm looking at it on an iPad. This looks nothing like what I shot because there's so many different standards out there. So they're aiming to create one that all the manufacturers and brands can kind of work within so that people can get the exact look that they wanted when they were shooting. Um, the next thing I want to talk about is our DPV 2410. Canon's kind of entered the display market uh, within the last year or so. Uh, we have a 30 inch and then this is our new 24 inch. The reason this is really amazing is because we're one of the only companies that has a um, display that can be lifted and carried in. It's more onset friendly. We have um, DC uh, three pin going in the back. So it's, it's really meant to be on set and in the color correction suite. And this is really important today because if you're shooting HDR, which a lot of people are starting to talk about, you need to see the HDR image on set because you will start making incorrect choices in your exposure and color. So it's really important that as HDR becomes more in the, in the world, and, and a lot of broadcasters will say HDR is probably the next step before 4K because the infrastructure is uh, much more expensive to build to deliver 4K to the home, but HDR we can kind of do right now. So I think that's going to be the next thing that we're seeing. So as we get into this world, HDR is becoming more and more important, and we really need tools on set to kind of see the HDR uh, functionality. So these are some of the features of the 2410 right now. This is without the firmware update. Again, we've got 400 nit edge to edge brightness. That's very, very important. A lot of other displays start to fall off around the edges. We, we go edge to edge with 400 nits. Um, we support 2020, the color gamut, which is an HDR uh, spec as well. Um, SMPTE 2084 we support. Um, we have ASUS proxy, so if you're working within the ASUS workflow, you can actually see um, an ASUS proxy. You can see an ASC CDL support as well, so if you're using any kind of LUT or things like that uh, through the ASC or the CSL or CDL. 24-volt um, battery input, now that's really important because it's hard to get these displays on set right now, so this one is specifically made to be on set. Uh, not just for on set, it can also be in color grading suites, but because it's lighter, it's about 20-some pounds, it's got a handle, it's got the power that you can actually get in the field. This is targeted at people using it on set as well. Um, very lightweight, as I was just saying. And the real secret that we have now with this camera is it can take our 4K RAW, Canon's 4K RAW, and debear it inside of the display, similar to the way Odyssey or Atomos is doing right now. So you're able to see with one 3G SDI cable, a 4K live signal. We are one of the only companies that's doing that right now. Most people are supporting quad link, which requires four cables. You're able to do it with our camera and our display with one cable. And that's really just because you're in the Canon infrastructure. This display certainly is for many different manufacturers, but there's just more you get out of it when you use the Canon cinema system as well. So the first update, and this is a pretty big deal, we're going to be supporting Log C. So if you use ARI or if anyone works within the ARI workflow, you use log C. And you need to be able to see it on set to know whether you're exposing right. Um, you, you don't want to see it with a, a LUT on it necessarily all the time. You want to see kind of the, the flat log so you know later I can dig out those shadows or I can pull detail from those highlights. So we're going to be one of the first displays in the field that's going to support log C. This is a really big deal because a lot of people use the ARI system. And so this display can be a really great tool to go with that system. 
Also, if you go on Aries website, there's a LUT generator specifically for the display. And the, the, the display is really amazing because you can load all sorts of uh, 3D LUTs onto it. You can actually color grade live on set. You can plug a tangent panel right into it and do live color grading off the 4K image. It's really, really amazing display. Um, but the LUT generator, you'll be able to specifically go on Aerie's site. If, you use, if anyone uses Aerie, this is kind of how you do it with any other display. You'll be able to create a, a 3D LUT specifically for the Canon display that can be loaded on later. So you can look specifically at what you want and know, you know confidently that it's not translating the colors or anything wrong. Second update we have is side-by-side -side images. This is a really cool feature because, again, with HDR going the way it's going, it's going to be required on set for people to think about what the HDR is going to look like, even though the SDR, the standard dynamic range. So real quickly, HDR stands for high dynamic range. So right now, everyone's in a standard dynamic range workflow because we haven't really gotten to HDR televisions in a way to, to put it out in the world. But we're definitely moving in that direction. So you're going to want to be able to see both images on set, your standard dynamic range and your high dynamic range, specifically so you know that when you're exposing for one, the other one's not totally looking wrong. So you can be on set judging this is the HDR image or the SDR image and the HDR image next to each other. So the cinematographer and the DIT and the director can actually look at both those images live on set from the camera. You'll also be able to look at log versus your outputted uh, LUT or peaking on or off. So really, really cool tool to have right next to each other. Uh, the next update, we're going to be supporting hybrid log gamma. And this is another HDR standard. Again, we're in this transitional stage. Every broadcaster, a lot of broadcasters are trying to create a new standard that hopefully will be adopted by everyone, and then they'll have the patent on it. So um, hybrid log gamma is a new HDR standard that I think was created by the BBC, and it's, it's for broadcast standards. So it will be supported inside. We already support the SMPTE 2084, which is another HDR standard. Um, but we're just trying to play with all of the standards right now until hopefully we get to one consistent one. And this is the final update. We have other things in the display, but this is the last one I'd like to cover. We have new waveform monitoring. Now, this is really important. Again, when you're in this HDR world, you have different brightness levels. So you're, you know, to get to HDR, you know, it's really anything over a certain nit level, and that's really measuring the brightness. So as you're looking at an HDR image, you need new tools to really be able to see the HDR image and judge the exposure. Because you may be looking at it on a 709 monitor, and you're not seeing the full HDR, and you're making incorrect exposure decisions. With the, with the waveform monitor, you know this is a scientific measure of the light. So you know you're not going to be making any, any wrong decisions when you have tools like this. And these will be now inside of, the inside of the display with a free firmware update. So that's pretty much it for me. Thank you guys so much. I really appreciate your time. Um, oh, check out the C300 Mark II and the DPV2410. It's actually at this booth right now. Um, it's definitely, um, b &H is one of our only dealers that actually has the display. So come here. You can talk to people about it. Uh, we have a few in our Canon booth. Uh, if you want to come by. Um, again, thank you so much for your time. My name is Alex Sachs. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to talk to me now or come visit me at the Canon booth or here later. Thank you so much. Whether you're a hobbyist or a professional, b &H has the answers to your questions. Experience a world of technology at our New York City Superstore. Connect with us online or give us a call. Our staff of experts is happy to help.